Welcome back to Springfield. We're going to be remaking The Simpsons Hidden Run. This is episode number six. You're looking at the brand new Krusty Burger locations. We've remodeled Krusty Burger from scratch. We've remodeled the Springfield Gasolines from scratch. These are retextured, remodeled, super time consuming. A lot of work goes into this. The Wiggum's house has been remade from scratch. I think it looks really, really good. And just fits with the Simpsons theme. The art style has really been locked in now. Uh, we have the brand new Burns house. Because there's only one Burns house in the entire map. And one Wiggum's house. These are very time consuming. But the rest of these houses, there's actually only about five types of house. And they're just copied and pasted. So we've replaced basically every single house in these starter levels. And Coriolan is not skimped on attention to detail but in this episode we're gonna get ambitious we have a new goal in this episode so welcome to episode number six guys yo what's going on guys welcome back to episode number five i think this one is what episode are we on now let me check i might not be five. Oh, oh we're up to episode six holy hello welcome back to episode number six guys in this one we're gonna start moving on to making some of the missions in the game we've got all this lovely new art in the game so it totally makes sense to make some missions now and hopefully when we make the missions it's really gonna like hit home like this is the remake that it's gonna really feel like the original game but just brought forward into the future so i'm gonna try and do the first four missions well i'm gonna do the tutorial and then the first three missions i think if we can do that it stands to reason we could remake every mission and then basically finish the game because I think there's only 40 missions, and a lot of them are basically just like copy-pastes of each other. So, without further ado, let's start on the tutorial mission. Right after I talk about today's sponsor, Paraforce. If you're a game developer, you're probably already familiar with Paraforce. I've used them for years, and so does Epic Games. But they have a brand new tool called Helix Dam. If you've ever worked with a team on a game, you'll know that sharing art and other assets gets really tricky. Paraforce created Helix Dam to basically streamline this process of sharing art and other game assets. It allows anyone to search, review, and organize assets, and you can do it from any web browser. For example, you can easily view every version of an asset that has ever been created. And Helix Dam even has a Kanban-style tracker so that everyone can track the progress of an asset and see how it's coming along. If you're collaborating on a game remotely, I think Paraforce really is a must-have for your team. And if you would like to set Paraforce up, I actually have a tutorial on my channel. And you can read more about Helix Dam by clicking the link in the description of this video. Thank you very much to Paraforce for sponsoring the video, and let's get into it. So the tutorial mission is going to be really nice, because it'll be a good sort of practice mission. The start of the mission, you have to have a dialogue with Marge, and we already made that dialogue in the last video. So basically, yeah, you just get into your vehicle, and you go and get some ice cream and cola from the Quickie Mart. So I don't think this one will be very difficult. Let's give it a go. All right, so we're going to use my narrative quest and dialogue tool. The link will be in the description if you want to check it out. It's a really good tool. So the first thing you do with my tool is you design your quest's layout. And then the next thing you have to do is script your quest. What do I mean when I say script? Well, for example, there's an invisible sphere around the Quickie Mart that you can see here. When the player walks into that sphere, it tells narrative, hey, you've arrived at the Quickie Mart and it can update the quest. Or when you talk to our poo, it spawns in this pickup, which is again, just an invisible sphere. And when you walk into it, it tells narrative, hey, the player took the cola and ice cream. And narrative looks at it, the design you made and it went, oh, the player needs to take the cola and ice cream. Look, their quest is complete now. You design the quest, and then you script it. And so here is our very first mission in the remake. Homie, somebody ate every dessert in the house. I need you to run to the store and pick up some of that ice cream with the miniature pies in it. Well, it must have been one of our kids. Probably Millhouse. Hey, I found my lost nachos. Give me a cola and I need another bucket of ice cream with mini pies. What happened to the ice cream with mini pies your wife bought this morning? Well, I probably ate it. I don't remember stuff too good. Go back home and talk to mom to start the next mission. 
And so that was the tutorial mission, and I think it came out pretty damn good. So let's move on to the actual first mission, which is called SMRT. So mission one, you have a dialogue with Marge. That's going to be really easy. We can use my narrative tool to make the dialogue. And then you have to take a pickup. We've already made pickups, so that's easy. And then the hard part, we have to make a racing system. So when I drive, we have a race against Skinner. And I made a traffic system, but racing is a lot different. The racing vehicle has to avoid other vehicles. It has to drive more erratically. There's actually a lot more that goes into it. So that's going to be really hard. But once we've made it, we can reuse that system later on. So it'll be worth the time. And then we have a dialogue with Lisa. And that's mission one. So the hard part's going to be racing. All right, so there's actually a lot of stuff that we have to do before we can make this SMRT quest. So the first thing is the quest design. I've used the narrative quest designer to design the quest. We also have Lisa's dialogue with Homer, Marge's dialogue with Homer. We have ripped Skinner from the game and um, remodeled him in HD. We have remade Lisa's science project in uh, full HD, super crispy. This probably took like two hours to make, so shout out to Sam for remaking this asset. And then we have also ripped Skinner's car from the original game files. And uh, we can always remake the art for this later on. But for now it looks pretty, pretty crappy. But that's alright. This little target point here is actually where Skinner's car spawns in. And we just have a list of roads that Skinner will follow. And if you follow all of the roads in this list, it actually takes you to the elementary school. So I tried to use as much of the existing traffic system that I made and just modify it a little bit. And because it uses this pre-made path of roads, there's no like path finding or any crazy difficult stuff. I always try to keep stuff as simple as possible if, if I can. All right, so I've coded the quest and we're gonna go ahead and start it. So we have to take Lisa's science project and then get in our car. Now the part we're testing is Skinner. He is supposed to drive to the school, so that's what we're testing. Skinner has successfully made it to Springfield Elementary. Obviously this is not a very challenging race, uh, but since he made it there, Oh god, what are you doing? <laughs> alright, we can fix that. Whatever, he made it to Springfield Elementary, alright? Skinner successfully reaches the school, which is great, but he needs to go faster so he's actually challenging to race against. Step one for him to go faster is getting him to stop being stuck behind traffic and actually avoid them. Alright, so get, getting Skinner to avoid oncoming obstacles is actually going to be pretty hard. So we've got traffic that break when there's an obstacle on the way, but we don't just want Skinner to break. We want him to go around the obstacle. So this is actually going to be pretty tricky. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to do that. So I think we're just going to make it. If something's in your way, steer until something isn't in your way. And then go back to what you were doing. Hopefully that works. We're going to give it a go anyway. The code that I'm writing here literally just checks if something is in your way. And if so, turn as hard as you can to the right. Alright, so we're going to get in his way here. That has worked remarkably good, considering how simple it is. Right does make sense a lot of the time. Because right is also going to put you on the footpath, which is better than going into the wrong side of the road. So I think making him always turn right actually does kind of make sense. So we have Skinner in the game, and obviously we could make him drive faster and be more challenging. But the other thing I want to try is this uh, position thing that tells you if you're first or second. But this is also like quite difficult to code. Alright, so I've added the places into the top left corner of the screen here. You can see it says I'm first, and then if I fall behind, it'll say I'm in second. But it's not technically correct, and the reason it's not correct is it figures out who's closer to Springfield Elementary. But, look, I'm first right now, but it actually says I'm second. That's because our position UI is dumb. Skinner is actually technically closer to the school than we are, so it's saying we're second. So we need a smarter way of measuring it rather than just who is closer to the school. The solution here is actually really simple. You remember that list of roads that Skinner follows to get to the school? Well, if you're on a road that is further up in that list, then you must be beating him. 
if he's on a road that's further up in the list, then he's beating you. It's actually really simple, unless you're on the same road, in which case we need to figure out who's further along the road. So it gets a little bit tricky, but otherwise not actually that hard. How to make a pimento cheese sandwich. Take the correct amount of cheese, put it on the sandwich. Look at that. First, second, first, second. It works perfectly. But yeah, you can see it works absolutely perfectly. So it figures out how much road is ahead of... Oh, come on! Why did it break that time? Oh, I know! Fudge. Ah! Oh! Out in the cold, fixing the bug. Epic coding bug fix. Please work. Please, please work. First, second, first, second, first, second, first, second. All right, this is good. This is working. Yes. Oh, second, second. First. Yeah, it looks like it's working perfectly. Man, what a pain that was to code. Problem number two is that Skinner needs to go faster, but if we make him faster, he just skids out on the corners and loses traction, so we need to fix that. We need him to take corners more slowly, but we can't just get him to slow down when he hits a corner because it would be too late. He needs to slow down before he even gets to the corner. So he needs to be able to look ahead of where he's going, see if a corner's there, so like detect corners, and then slow down in advance. I feel like I'm riding uh, Tesla self-driving right now. Here we go again. Right in the code, detecting the corners, Skinner needs to slow the hell down. Okay, after several hours of boring coding, we've figured out a system. The blue arrow is the rotation of the road 10 meters ahead of the car. The red arrow is the current rotation of the car. When those arrows get too far away from each other, we slow the car down. It's basically corner detection. See here, the arrows get far apart and Skinner successfully slows down. He doesn't lose traction on the corner. So there it is, problem solved. All right, at this point, I'm pretty happy with where the quest's at. So here is mission one, SMRT. Get it to her? Hello, do I have to? You can drop it off on the way to work. And I have to go to work? Definitely a lot happier with Skinner's driving now, although there's definitely still room to make him go even faster because he's still not really that challenging. I remember when I was like eight and I discovered you could jump off this fire truck for the first time and just thinking I was an absolute genius. You're gonna see Skinner actually jumps off the parking lot here, and he does this in the original quest too, so I made him do it in the remake, of course. Also, I know this sucks, but I don't have the interior of the school modeled yet, so you have to go around the back. Obviously, we'll fix that when we have the interior of the school modeled. I got hungry and it was a fig. It was modeling clay. No. By the way, Dad, Mom called. She says she needs to talk to you at home before you go to work. No! Okay, now we're making mission number two. Before I start on mission two, I just wanted to show you guys. In the original game, if you find a collector's card, it says one out of seven because there were seven cards in the original game. But because this is an open world remake with all the levels in one, there's actually 49 cards. So if you take a card in the remake, it says 1 out of 49. So yeah, pretty cool. Just thought I'd show you guys. Oh, it's Homer's little control room. 
I have never been in here. I don't even, yeah, I, I didn't even realize this got added. Wow. Get up here. Hey, parchment. Spine Melter 2000. This was a cool level. Like, I would love for Corylon to remaster this area as well. It would look so good when it's done. Can you guys see the potential here? I do not know how I forgot to mention this. I have made the phone booths. I totally forgot to record this. <laughs> but I made this uh, earlier in the week. Check it out. And it's upgraded in some ways. It obviously could still use a bit more work. But it's actually got a 3D preview of the car that you're getting. Let's get the rocket car. I thought I would just show you too how putting new art in the game works. So Corylon actually just sent over a new piece of road and I can basically just drop it right in. The only work I really have to do is putting the new materials on her art and then deleting the old road that would otherwise get in the way. So here is the new sidewalks. There's a lot of old grass and things that we have to delete before we can drop this in and we have to put the new materials on. Looking pretty nice, looking pretty decent, and she's going to have the apartments done pretty soon, so that'll be good. Brand new Lard Lad Donuts sign, by the way. It makes me feel like upscaling this was a complete waste of time now, but man, that does look really nice. Mission 2 is Petty Theft Homer, which is a play on Grand Theft Auto. Basically, Homer has stolen a bunch of Ned's stuff, and you have to go and find it. And we've already coded the concept of pickups, and this is basically just finding a bunch of pickups. The only thing that we're going to have to code in is the timer. You can see that there's a timer, and finding the items adds to the timer. Also, you have to talk to Barney, because he has Ned's cooler, and Rod's inhalers on top of the duff truck for some reason. So anyways, yeah, you take all the stuff back to Ned, and that's the mission. So I think this one should actually be pretty easy. Alright, so we have made the quest design for Petty Theft Homer, and we've already made the pickups. Um, and I also added in a quest timer, so I made this narrative event, and at any point in the quest, if you want, you can begin a quest timer, so I could change this to be 120 seconds, whatever I want it to be. By default, it is 40 seconds. When you get into your vehicle, it starts that timer, and then when you come back to Neb with the items, it actually ends the timer. So narrative is pretty easy to customize. Coding the timer was really simple. I just added it to my quest class, and then there's also a bit of UI that comes up on the screen saying how much time you have left as well. And a big shout out to Sam who has remade all of Ned's stolen items in higher resolution. And again, like the work that goes into this is just awesome. So yeah, these pickups are now nice and crispy as well. Homer, go talk to Ned Flanders. He sings Nip and P.O. Why me? I'm the world's greatest neighbor. I even have a mug to that effect. We also ripped Flanders from the game and upscaled him in HD and all that good stuff. And we also fixed this glitch with his mouth that was in the original game. I'm all in a dither, Homer. So many of my possessions have disappeared. I called the police to find the culprit. Culprit, eh? My lawnmower, my cooler, my lawn chair, a family portrait, even Rod's inhaler. What kind of sick individual would take this stuff? Oh no, I borrowed all of Flanders' stuff. Quick, think of an excuse to get out of here. Uh, excuse me, I think I have to go shuck some corn. We're also using the animations out of the original game. I think some of them are still really good, but the dialogue animations are pretty bad, so I'd like to have someone actually remake those at some point. Because narrative is super easy to customize, I was able to add a bunch of features like getting Homer to say a certain dialogue line when you get to a certain point in a quest.
stuff before the cops find me sitting around talking to myself. I love to sit. When I recorded this clip, the game needed some optimizing, and I've done a little bit of optimizing since, so the game turns into a bit of a slideshow here, but I've already fixed most of the problems, and the performance is a lot better now. Flanders, look! I found your missing stuff! Now, about the reward. <laughs> Thanks, neighbor Rooney. Here's your reward. A prayer from the Lord's number one fan. Our Father in Heaven, bless this noble oaf. Stupid Flanders getting happiness from religion. So, mission number three is Office Space. I'm sure you guys remember this one. This is where you have to buy the Plow King off of Barney. And then you have to destroy Smithers' car before he reaches the destination. So, it's actually quite similar to SMRT, except this time you're obviously trying to destroy the person's car, so I have to make at least a basic vehicle damage system to do this quest. Here's the quest design, and it's really cool, we're starting to actually get some efficiencies here, like I already coded the quest timer system, right, so we don't have to do that again. I already coded the driving system, Smithers uses basically the exact same driving system, right, he follows this predetermined set of roads, the only difference is now we have to destroy him. There's a new piece of UI that we put on the screen, which is basically the amount of health he has left. Smithers has been ripped from the game, along with his car. And Lenny is also in the game. So to start the mission, we have to go to the Krusty Burger. And we have to go and talk to Lenny. So we have to go and get the Plow King, and I just realized I don't have 150 coins, so I have to go and get some coins. But the easiest way to get 150 coins is there is just a whole bunch of crates behind these houses. Hundred and forty two coins. We need four more coins. Yeah, there you go. Alright. hundred and fifty, there we go. Oh yeah, I added first person by the way. I haven't really been using it, but it's in the game because it was super easy to make. Um so I thought why not? And so yeah, let's uh talk to Barney. And you can see now we actually have the option, I'll take it. And if we select it, here is the Plow King, we've purchased it. And obviously this is still the original Plow King, so it looks pretty bad, but let's get in. Alright, so when we start approaching the Quickie Mart, it's going to spawn our good friend Smithers in. And we're going to have to destroy his car. There he is there, let's get him. Ah, yeah. No. Yeah, there we go. Alright. <laughs> the car damage system is pretty janky at the moment. You'll also notice, I don't know if I, uh, if you guys remember this, but when you would destroy your car, this thing would spawn in. And you're able to ride it around, although it's like, so slow that it's basically useless. Thank you guys for watching this video, I'll see ya in the next one. We're gonna have even more stuff, even more features. It's gonna be crazy, I am not playing. Look at that window up there, look how nice that looks, dude. Oh my god. Unreal Engine 5, you beautiful, beautiful engine. Alright, anyways guys, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.